The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whosoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Please pray with me. Gracious God, as we gather before you to learn your word, a word that becomes part of our very being, touch us deeply so that word changes us, renews us, and leads us into wholeness. In Jesus' name, amen. Years ago, back in 1972 or 1973 when I was in high school, I came with my mother to Faith Lutheran Church in Okemos, Michigan for a gathering of the Michigan District ALCW, the American Lutheran Church Women. I vividly remember that day because Evelyn Frost, a person some of you may remember, was the speaker. Her remarks on that day made a huge impression on my formidable mind. The gospel passage on which she spoke was the gospel reading that we have today. I remember being absolutely fascinated as she talked about salt, the many properties and the many varieties of salt, and the multiple ways in which we use salt. As I studied today's gospel reading, I remembered that experience of some 45 years ago that brought, came back to my mind. Salt and light. Jesus tells us we are the salt and the light of the world. Last week, we heard Jesus launch his ministry by beginning his inaugural address, the message we now call the Sermon on the Mount. Last week, we heard him begin with the Beatitudes, that wonderful vision that lifts up the most unlikely people, the poor in spirit, the meek and the merciful, those who mourn and those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, those who are pure in heart, the peacemakers, and the persecuted. Last week, we heard Jesus call these most unlikely of people blessed. Today, Jesus continues his sermon by addressing the crowd as you and offering them words of both reassurance and challenge. 
The you that he addresses is a plural you. It is to be heard by us not as privately pious Christians, but as the body of Christ, active in the world God so deeply loves, even if that activity is sometimes risky business. As Jesus continues, he uses the metaphors of salt and light. And like that second generation of Christians to whom Matthew is writing, we listen with the crowd to hear that we too are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. One of the things I remember Evelyn Frost talking about was the existence of multiple types of salt. If we were to go out shopping for salt, we would find pink, black, gray, flaky, crystals, rock, sand, iodized and unidized, just to name a few. Some salts are better used when cooking, and, and others are best as a finishing touch. Some salts are not edible, but are used for chemical purposes. Salt is something that is necessary for human life. And remembering that the book of Matthew is written for early Jewish Christians, it's quite interesting to note that some of the early Christian communities placed salt on the tongue of the newly baptized. Given the wide variety of salt around the earth and around the world, its culinary and chemical significance and its many uses, Jesus' comparison of believers to salt is really even more meaningful. Christians, one might say, are chemically the same through the work of the Spirit but called to different uses and work. And then, when we think about light, being salt and light, we must remember that light is not just the opposite of dark. It is also the opposite of heavy. In today's Old Testament reading, Isaiah calls Israel to a fast that is about reducing a certain kind of heaviness, the heaviness others carry. The fast that God has chosen should lessen the burden and heaviness of those who are oppressed. The fast that God calls us to should lessen the heaviness and struggles of the poor, the widows, the orphans, the resident aliens among us, and all those on the margins. Lighting the world as children of God also involves lightening the weight of war, poverty, destruction, and division. Today's Gospel reading epitomizes Matthew's understanding that the Christian movement built upon and perfected the righteousness prescribed by the Jewish commandments and the call of prophets like Isaiah. When talking about Jesus' words to us today, Lutheran theologian and professor Barbara Lundblad connects his message to the words of the prophets before him when she writes, for Jesus, salt and light came out of a long tradition of biblical teaching. Salt and light were images for the law of God. Salt and light must take us back to the fullness of the law and the prophets and the fullness of Jesus' radical teaching in this Sermon on the Mount. The prophets plead for a fullness of life, freedom from oppression, Bread for the hungry, homes for those who have none, clothing for the naked. Is this not what it means to be the salt of the earth, to keep this prophetic word alive in the midst of our world? If we lose this vision, if we give in to other values, if we forget God's longing for justice, our salt has lost its taste. If you think Jesus' call is impossible, remember 
that the one who is our bread is with us and within us, empowering us to be salt and light in this world. This is the righteousness prescribed in the Jewish commandments and the call of the prophets, and it is the righteousness called forth in the kingdom of heaven, the inbreaking reign of God. This is the righteousness Jesus proclaims as already here when transformation is taking place through him. The Christian community receives the call to be salt and light, and this gospel message is about bringing transformation not only to our individual selves or the members of a specific church or community, but transformation to the entire world. Now, it's important to look again at Jesus' words to us because he says, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. As Lutheran pastor and theologian David Lowe says, Jesus isn't saying you should be the salt of the earth and the light of the world, or you have to be, let alone you better be. Rather, he is saying you are, as in already are, even if you don't know it, even if you once knew and forgot it, even if you have a hard time believing it. Jesus is making to his disciples a promise about their very being. He is not commanding, let alone threatening them about what they should be doing. And that's worth tarrying over. As so many in our congregations and our world experience God more like a divine lawmaker and rule enforcer than generous gift giver. In today's reading, Jesus is making promises and giving gifts. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. And this is, like Jesus' words we heard last week, sheer blessing. And it is about identity, about our very being, which in turn leads us to doing. It is all about living into the God-given identity we already have. Listen again to Jesus' words to us today as I read them from Eugene Peterson's translation, The Message. Listen as Jesus speaks to you. Let me tell you why you are here. You're here to be salt seasoning that brings out the God flavors of this earth. If you lose your saltiness, how will people taste godliness? You've lost your usefulness and will end up in the garbage. Here's another way to put it. You're here to be light, bringing out the God colors in the world. God is not a secret to be kept. We're going public with this, as public as a city on a hill. If I make you light bearers, you don't think I'm going to hide you under a bucket, do you? I'm putting you on a light stand. Now that I've put you there on a hilltop, on a light stand, shine. Keep open house. Be generous with your lives. By opening up to others, you will prompt people to open up with God, this generous Father in heaven. As I think back to that time in the early 70s when I came here to Faith Lutheran Church in Okemos and heard Evelyn Frost speak, I realized she truly was salt seasoning, bringing out God flavors to all who listened. She was God's light bearer who brought transformation in my life. That's why I still remember it. May we, like her, open up to others and prompt others to open up with God. Amen. Thank you.